In this video we are going to explore a much debated theological question, for whom did Christ die? Today, we will delve into the Bible to show that Christ's atonement was not universal but specifically for a chosen group. Join us as we uncover this important truth. The concept of a specific atonement is not new, it is foreshadowed throughout the Old Testament. Consider the Passover in Exodus 12 verse 13. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague will befall you to destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. The blood of the Lamb was effective only for those who applied it to their doorposts, specifically the Israelites. On the Day of Atonement, Leviticus 16 verses 15 to 16 details the high priest making atonement for Israel. Then he shall kill the goat of the sin offering that is for the people and bring its blood inside the veil. Thus he shall make atonement for the holy place, because of the uncleannesses of the people of Israel. This sacrificial system was specific to the people of Israel. In Isaiah 53 verse 11, we see a prophecy about the Messiah. Out of the anguish of his soul he shall see and be satisfied. By his knowledge shall the righteous one, my servant, make many to be accounted righteous, and he shall bear their iniquities. The servant bears the iniquities of many but not for all. To understand for whom Christ died, we need to examine several key New Testament verses that reveal the scope of his sacrifice. Matthew 1 verse 21 says, She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Here, it's clear that Jesus came to save his people. Who are his people? This sets the stage for understanding the particularity of his atonement. In John 10 verses 14 to 15, Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me, just as the Father knows me and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. Jesus explicitly states that he lays down his life for the sheep, indicating a specific group of people. He continues in John 10 verses 26 to 27, But you do not believe because you are not among my sheep. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. This clearly distinguishes between those who are his sheep and those who are not. Ephesians 5 verse 25 says, Husbands, love your wives, as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. Paul highlights that Christ's sacrificial love is directed toward the church, his bride, not humanity at large. In Acts 20 verse 28, Paul tells the Ephesian elders, Pay careful attention to yourselves and to all the flock, in which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers, to care for the church of God, which he obtained with his own blood. Again, the focus is on the church, those whom God has chosen and Christ has redeemed. Revelation 5 verse 9 provides a global yet specific scope, and they sang a new song, saying, Worthy are you to take the scroll and to open its seals, for you were slain, and by your blood you ransomed people for God from every tribe and language and people and nation. This verse shows that Christ's atonement is particular to those he ransomed even though they come from every part of the world. The doctrine of limited atonement, or particular redemption, teaches that Christ's atonement is sufficient for all, but efficient only for the elect, those whom God has chosen. This doctrine is rooted in the understanding that Christ's death was purposeful and effective for securing the salvation of his people. Romans 8 verses 29 to 30 reinforces this. For those whom he foreknew he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, in order that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. And those whom he predestined he also called, and those whom he called he also justified, and those whom he justified he also glorified. The golden chain of redemption shows God's specific plan from foreknowledge to glorification. To conclude, the Bible clearly shows that Christ's atonement was not universal but intended for a specific group, his elect. This understanding magnifies the purpose and effectiveness of Jesus' sacrifice ensuring that his death was not in vain but fully accomplished the redemption of his people. Thank you for joining us on this theological journey. If you found this exploration enlightening, please like, share, and subscribe for more in-depth biblical studies. Until next time, continue to seek the truth in God's Word.